Hi, I'm Diane Hall with AARP Missouri, and I'd like to welcome you to Functional Movement. This is the sixth week of our eight-week class created and led by Tyler Ferguson, who will put the fun in functional movement. We've got two more classes to go, six, seven, eight. Yes, two more classes to go. So I hope you're feeling more functional. I certainly am. Uh, functional movement is designed to both build strength and flexibility to carry out everyday tasks, as well as improve your fitness level, regardless of what level you're starting from. And speaking of fitness, you can find many of our previous fitness classes on Missouri's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash slash C, like the letter C, slash A-A-R-P-M-O. Now, functional movement is a class that is suitable for many levels of fitness. However, you know your own limitations. Please do not try and go beyond what you know is right for you. If you have any concerns at all, please check with your doctor before participating in this or any other fitness offering from AARP. AARP also offers other live classes and I can't remember exactly which one is live right now because Zumba Lite just ended, I believe, but it will be on our website because we have links to past programs like Forever Fit and Yoga with Tyler. You can participate in the recording and then the links for current past and upcoming programs are at aarp.org forward slash moving it. All of our programming is created with people age 50 plus in mind, but it's good for anyone of any age, anywhere. AARP hopes that our fitness classes like Movement for like movement for Life, I was back on the last one, Functional Movement, which is what we're doing today. We hope that they're gonna be great options for anyone who may not be able to, or may be hesitant to attend a traditional fitness class, like a caregiver, or for those who might have health concerns, or who might just want the convenience of working out at home. In addition to our online fitness classes, AARP also has resources for caregivers, up-to-date COVID-19 information, and tech information on our website at aarp.org slash near you. Now, let's get started with functional movement. Our instructor is Tyler Ferguson. Tyler, let the functioning begin. Hi, everybody. Good morning. If you've been rolling out your feet, you can go ahead and take your ball and set it off to the side and then use this opportunity to see how your feet feel after you've taken some time to roll them. Lift and spread the toes nice and wide, place them back down on the mat, and then start to shift your posture over your uh, arch of your foot. So notice if your hips want to go way in front or way behind your arch, can you bring them in alignment? Shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders, stand up nice and tall. Inhale, bring the air into the lungs, expand the lungs outward. Exhale, release, feel the rib cage move back towards the midline. Now you can keep your arms relaxed on the side. Inhale in through the nose. Fill up and exhale. Keep doing this for a few more rounds of breath. Um, I don't want to underestimate the uh, power of nostril breathing simply by shifting our awareness and bringing our attention to breathing through our nostrils. Uh, the nostrils are designed to moisten the air and filter the air. So just making that adjustment can um, keep you more hydrated or the opposite, breathing through the mouth could dehydrate you. So shifting your awareness to nostril breathing as we do these warm up exercises. When we start to move into the more cardio based exercise, you can inhale nose and exhale mouth. Maybe purse your lips together so you're not exhaling out of the back of the throat. So let's try that. Inhale, nose, purse your lips together, exhale, mouth. Final time, inhale, nose, exhale, mouth. I'm hoping you can hear this, okay, great. Let's bring our arms out to the side and inhale, exhale, bring the arms down. So start to move with your breath. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the arms down. We might be moving at different paces in this breath exercise. We might be moving at different paces during class today. So choose the pace that fits you. Choose the level that fits you. Keep your arms out stretched to the sides or bring your arms up overhead. Palms are together. Nice and gentle. So some of you, your hands might be more out in front. Others, your biceps might go up towards your ears. Just bring it to a place where it's nice and gentle. And then lift the eye gaze up and chin down to the chest. Just going to go two on each side today because we have a lot of material to get in here. That's the last and final one. 
Bring the arms out to the side, rotate, look over right shoulder, slowly come back through the midline, rotate, look over left shoulder. One more time, spinning your head as if your chin was um, cruising along the same flat surface. So not tilting the head down. Now bring your knuckles down to your side, new exercise, right ear goes toward right shoulder, but more importantly, left jaw pulls up and away. Inhale. Exhale, chin goes down, switch, left ear to left shoulder, right jaw pulls up, shoulders are pulling away from the ears by driving our knuckles down to the ground. Chin down and switch, right ear goes towards right shoulder. And chin down and switch, left ear goes to left shoulder. And chin down and switch, bring your hands together, shoot your fingertips forward, round the upper part of your back so you're not uh, rounding in your tail too much, just pressing the upper round part of your back, separating shoulder blades and sending your um, shoulders more forward. Inhale here. Now do the opposite. Separate the hands, pull your chest and heart forward, feel the shoulder blades coming together in the back. And again, we're not doing too much in the pelvis here, just in the upper body. And then two more times, shooting round, and open up chest expansion. Bring your hands right down to your thighs. Come into chair pose like you're gonna sit down in a chair. Shoulders up and back, and then start to tuck and release the tail. So just moving this low back into a tuck and release, and then pressing your upper spine to work with the low back. We'll go into standing cat pose. Now draw your wrists towards your belly button as you pull your heart forward into standing cow pose. Make this a little bit more dynamic. Press the hands away, standing cat pose. Pull the hands toward you, standing cow pose. Connect your breath, outhale, exhale, outhale, <laughs> standing cat. And inhale, standing cow pose. Press yourself back up to center. Working our way over to the side, let your right hand slide down your leg as you bring your left hand up. So this is one way to get this lateral flexion of the spine without having any overhead levers with our arms. Try that on the other side. Just slide down, find your natural place where you've released, you either have not enough room on the hand that you're sliding down or you're out of room on the opposite side not lifting any feet here, come back up to center. You can stay right there and slide your arms down, or you can reach your arms overhead, grab elbows. That might be a little bit in front of you if you do. Come over to the side, lateral spinal flexion, back up to center. Over to the other side. There's a lot of ways to do this. Pick the way that feels good to you. Another option, fingertips behind the head, Elbows nice and wide, chest nice and lifted. Bring your right elbow down to the side, left elbow reaches up to the sky. And then press up, find it on the other side. So whatever way works for you, just find this movement, this lateral bend in the spine. Notice my hips are staying pretty darn stacked over the ankles. So we're not shifting the hips off of your mat and come back up to center. Good, hands go on the hips, sit back, not straight back, but as if your chair is off to the side. So you're sitting back kind of diagonally to the back corner of the room, come back up, send the hip creases forward and turn on your glutes, stand nice and tall, and then sit back to the side on the other part of the room or the other direction of the room. Stand tall, send your hip creases forward. One more time on each side sitting back. When we stand tall, be sure that the hip creases go forward, but you're not arching the back so much. So you wanna keep your ribs down when your hips go forward. Let's practice that one right after we get this last little hip root in here. Good. Now, sometimes when we breathe, we can make the ribs kind of lift. So see if you can feel that. Inhale up, feel the ribs lift. Now exhale, bring the ribs down, back down towards your pelvis and in toward one another. Keep that knitting 
sensation, ribs down towards the pelvis, but push the front of your hips forward and squeeze your uh, glutes on. So that's what I mean by standing tall as opposed to turning the glutes on and letting the rib cage rise. All right, see that distinction there? Because at the end of each of our squats and our segments today, we wanna end with standing up nice and tall. We'll go down and do just a little bit of movement in the feet before we start, lift and separate the toes, spread them wide. Take your big toes and place them down on the earth. Keep the other four toes lifted. You can look down at your toes, four toes go down, big toes reach up now. That's your toe challenge to work on your homework, differentiating the muscles that control the big toe versus the other four toes. And let's switch it up, big toe down, other four toes lift. And other four toes down, big toes lift. Good work. Everything goes down on the floor. Let's roll to the outside edges to the level of comfort for you. Feel the stretch in the outer muscles of the legs and then roll into the inside. So as we roll, rock and roll outside to inside, you are peeling up the big toe mound or peeling up the piggy toe mound off of the earth. So just getting a little ankle mobility in the, this direction, good, and release, let it go, shake out the legs. Okay, that's our warm up this morning because we have a big uh, set to cover. So come to hips distance in your feet and sit back down just like you're gonna sit in a chair pose. Take your hands, press them on your thighs, and then let's activate the upper body a little bit. So can, when your hands are on your thighs, can you start to pull the elbows back and notice Maybe you feel the chest turn on, or maybe you feel muscles in your back turn on. Take an inhale here, exhale, press up and stand, drive knuckles down, keep ribs knitted, send hips forward, squeeze glutes. Press the elbows back, feel length in the back, inhale, lower down, exhale, press up. Actually, I don't care, you can inhale and exhale whenever you want. I'm gonna inhale, lower, exhale, press. I don't care what phase of the work you take your breath, just as long as you can connect to your breath with your movement. That's what really matters here. I want you to choose how low you go. And I want you to choose how quickly you do these squats. If I'm moving a little quickly for you, go ahead and slow it down. It doesn't matter. We don't have to get in the same number of reps. We're just feeling the sensation of the squat. Can you bring your awareness down to your feet and notice if you're equally weighted between your right and your left foot, can you also notice if your toes are pointing forward, or if you have a tendency to turn out a little bit. If you have a tendency to turn out a little bit, that's fine today. Just be aware of that. Maybe try to find symmetry. And then notice if it's a habit. And if it is a habit, can you bring the toes back to the midline and work away from that habit? If you need to do it to stay out of pain, then that's certainly acceptable. Stand with me at the top here. Pull your feet away from each other like you're trying to tear the mat apart, but your feet aren't going to move. Now keep that activation as you sit down. Keep pulling. Press back up, stand. Pull the feet apart. Press up and stand. Strong elbows, strong chest pulling forward. So we're just adding a little bit more tissue to the work as we do it. Final one. Squat it down. Stand up, drive knuckles down. Now when we drive knuckles down, we want to feel triceps here. Okay, here's the drill. Some of you, you're just gonna move right and left on your mat. Others, you're gonna go right into your squats, but it's just gonna be a big wide one like this. So those are two options for you. The rest of you, we're gonna go wide squat and come back to the center. Wide squat. So this is a more dynamic version of the wide squat. A lot of things to keep in mind here. Is your pelvis equal, equally planted between your two feet? Are both knees bending? Sometimes the tendency is to leave this plant leg at home and straighten it out. So this is a true squat. Both knees are bending. Good. Right. And the last thing is, if you have a tendency to turn your toe out when you land, like you'll notice if you kind of turn out, think about leading more with your heel so that your toe can stay forward. Now. Let's work on, some of you stay there. Others, we're gonna go into a little bit of balance. Wide squat, single leg balance. Wide squat, single leg. Some of you stay right here or we're gonna add on. 
arms up overhead. Stay with me here for six, five. What we're trying to do is balance at the top on number one. This is three. This is two. Pick the version that suits you. This is one. Can you stick that balance? Good job. Arms come out to the side. It's always okay if you put a kickstand down. If you're able to maintain the balance or grab a chair, grab a wall to assist with your balance, find your drishti. So taking your eyes off the screen, find your gazing point, stick your extended leg forward and start to just circle that ankle, challenging the single leg balance, circle in the other direction. All right, here's a new one. Pull that knee in. You can bring the foot to the body to help you figure out where you are in space. Can you slightly turn your neck and look over your left fingertips? Super challenging here. Bring your eye gaze back to center, nice and slow. Can you look over your right fingertips? Eye gaze back to center, nice and slow. Right foot goes down, wiggle it out. Good job. Let's march in place and start to swing your arms back and forth. Feel the rib cage rotate on the spine. So my head stays in the same place. I'm not uh, knocking it side to side or looking side to side. And I'm using the momentum of the arms to try to feel rotation in the rib cage. So you see my pelvis is pretty forward, but my rib cage is doing that nice little spin. All right, let's come to stillness. Let's step over to the left. Some of you step to the left. Some of you are gonna step wide and squat and stay right there. Others, you're gonna try all of this, a big alphabet soup. You can get more dynamic and start stepping to the center. So any of these three options are great through this, trend, or through this set of exercises. Maybe you wanna start playing with your balance on this side of the body. You wanna drive down to stand tall. So push through that standing leg, drive knuckles down, shoulders out of the ears, but feel the crown of the head reach tall. I'm moving a little fast because I'm talking. So slow it down. I'm sorry when I speed up. Now, the arms add a little bit of a cardio element here. So if the heart rate goes up and that's not for you, just take the arms out of the equation. Get the legs first. Don't worry about the arms. Let's go four, three, and two. You get your four, match your speed. And one, find your balance. Great job. Again, kickstand is okay. Holding on to a chair or a wall is okay. Take your extended or lifted leg, bring it forward. Find some circles in the ankle. Now, is this quad tired? Because you're trying to lift this leg? If so, let this leg, the standing leg, do the work. So double down in that leg, push to the heel, turn the glute, hug it to the bone. See how that makes that leg lighter? Pretty cool, huh? Bend it and bring it in. Eye gaze over to the left. Nice and slow, back to center. Trace your eyes along the wall in the room. Eye gaze over to the right. Nice and slow, back to center. And let's step it down, march it out. Actually, we're not gonna march. We're gonna keep our feet still, but just uh, let the arms wrap this time. So instead of swinging the arms forward, just rotate through the rib cage and let your arms slap along your body. It gives a nice little tug uh, to the tissues at the shoulder. All right, my friends, let's take our stance not super wide. This isn't like the uh, turnout phase, but just a nice stance under the hips. And we're going to sit back, look over the right shoulder, stand up nice and tall, squeeze glutes. Sit back, look over the shoulder, and stand tall. So we just start with the neck first, neck and eyes, looking back over the shoulder as if somebody's coming in the room behind you and you're trying to see who it is. All right, now we're going to pretend like there's something down on the floor. So you're going to pick down, reach it up, or pick it up, sorry, and then hold it right at your chest, nice and tall. So I like to think about the precision of a drill team here. Super precision in the movements. 
Just because I'm twisting down to the ground doesn't mean my hips twist and counter. We're trying to get out of that. Hips go straight back. It's still a squat with just a little bit of rotation. Then we're holding onto that box, elbows down. Now, let's share it. So feel how we're twisting in two directions. So we did those little warms up, warm ups, getting the rib cage moving. Can we get the rib cage to move independently of the pelvis here? Lower body, pelvis, we're still squatting. Hips are still going straight back. Upper body, we're rotating. Last one, come back to center and wiggle it out. And we'll take that on the other side. So we'll just start squat looking over left shoulder. Now, if you're kind of over all of these squats, you don't have to go so deep in your squat. We're just trying to set up a situation where we pattern what the squat function is in the lower body. Knees track over toe, hips pull back behind heels, right? As we add rotation to this, the squat doesn't change. So let's pick up that box and hold it. Notice what happens in your body when you start to rotate through the trunk. Does that transfer down, blah, 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 transfer down into the pelvis? Or can you differentiate? Can you still squat in the lower body, rotate, pick up your box and hold it in the upper body? So move at a speed or a pace that lets you observe that and make any corrections if that's possible. And then let's share it. So twists in two directions. And we want to correct, not correct. <laughs> we want to connect our breath to the movement. Good. I'm looking around. My watch over there. I have to figure out a fancy way to get my watch. Last one, twist and come back to center. All right. We're going to move forward in our front lunge. We practiced our front lunge before. I'm going to show it to you from the side. So my, I'm going to step forward with my right foot. And notice when I do, my heel lifts in the back, but my shoulders, they stay home. All right? They stay home over my hips. And then I'm going to press back and press back. So when I land, you'll also notice that I'm landing toes first and then bringing the heel down. Final thing, this base foot, it might be turned out just a little bit and that's okay. So pretend like you're stepping off a curb, no traffic or yeah, there is traffic. So I'm gonna get back on that curb. Just a delicate little front lunge building a little ankle strength and mobility. So notice how that back heel, when it lifts, that's propelling you forward. And then you're pushing off to come back. All right, let's stay in our front lunge. Let's land here and stay. Remember, there's a little turnout in the back heel. Back heel stays lifted. And we're gonna try to bend both knees and then stand up. The biggest thing here is notice my front knee is over my front ankle and my front heel is on the ground. Can you keep the heel lifted on that one? That's pretty, pretty challenging. So you are going to really work this rear glute to help you lift. And you wanna make sure your feet are in train tracks that you're not on a tightrope. It's gonna be harder on a tightrope. So wide base of support. Last one, push off and come back to the center. All right, let's walk it. Kind of wiggle your hips a little bit as you walk it. And we're gonna do our front lunges in the other direction, left foot now. So just get the pattern, just step it forward and back. So just feel the natural uh, momentum of the heel lifting in the back. Feel how the leg can go forward, but the shoulders can stay home. And then we'll formalize it a little bit. We'll go toe heel and then bend that front knee a little bit. So let's talk about shoulders over hips as we do this movement, start to draw the navel into the spine and move from your core. So move less thinking about these limbs, right? And trying to get these limbs under control without being in control of your core. If you send your shoulders forward, you lose that core connection and you send a lot of um, lever or a lot of weight 
into that front leg. So just mapping this out, only doing the number of reps that suit you and then stay home with me. Let's set up our lunge, our stationary lunge. Just gonna lower and lift it back up. Again, your front uh, knee, you want it to remain pretty much over your ankle in all phases, or I, I should say the lowering phase of this lunge. In other words, you don't wanna be here, right? See how my knee is going over my toes and my heel is lifting in the front? We don't want that. We wanna get that foot more out in front of you and make it safe, good. And then in the back leg, just turn on that glute, hug it to the bone, the quad muscle will come to the bone and you'll feel that whole leg working to stabilize you. Good, shoulders are over hips. Last time, let's press it back and march it out. Come to stillness. Take your toes out, let the heels follow, toes go out, heels follow, toes go out. So we're in our turnout now, in our turnout um, uh, orientation with our feet. And then we're just going to, on this right side, bring the heel more in alignment, pull your hips back behind your heel and line up. So here's what it looks like from the front, from the side, You'll see, once again, we look where the knee is. It's over the ankle, just like we practiced before, as opposed to coming over to the side, driving the knee forward, lifting the heel. That's not where we're going. You'll feel this in your quad. We want to pull the hips back and then load, feeling your backside. All right, so if you're there with me, let's press down and then stand up nice and tall. Now, when we did our wide lunge before, I mean, I'm sorry, our wide squat before, we were bending both knees, right? We were stepping wide and squatting with both knees as if we were picking down, uh, getting ready to pick up something in front of us. This one, and, and I don't know about you guys, but I, I use this one in my kitchen all the time, right? So I'm standing at the sink. I need something out of the drawer. So I keep this foot at home and I step over to my drawer, pull it open, get the thing I need out, and then I step back to the sink. All right, so we're just feeling that lunge in our body. Now, bring your opposite arm up. Just get a little activation in the upper body. So press down, elbow up, find that precision, brush your hand across your chest. Now that's important. Did everybody hear that? Brush your hand across your chest. As you keep your hand connected to your chest, do a little turn. Nice and controlled. Touch your chest as you turn. What some people might be doing is this, right? That's not what we're doing. Keep your hand touching your chest, turn your whole trunk, keep that connection. Rotate, good. This is number two. And last one. Good job. Come on over here, hang out on this right side, and then we're gonna switch. Pull your hips over to the left side. So you might have to organize the feet a little bit. Bring your left hip behind your left heel. You might have to walk the heel in to get that alignment. And then we're gonna lower down and press it up. Good. So you wanna feel this more in your seat. You're trying to make that connection, go in and make the connection from your heel or actually the front part of your heel, right where the front part of your heel begins to connect to the arch of your foot. Make that connection. Each time you press up and push off, you're gonna feel some quad, but the more you can get your hips behind you, the more I want you to feel hamstring and glute, or just think muscles on the backside of the body, muscles you can't see on the backside. I'm not giving you my full knuckle down triceps here because I'm yapping, but if you're finding that good for you, let's find that little bit of arm activation. So elbow is pulling out directly to the opposite side. As you do that, you might be able to turn on your bicep and your tricep. These two muscles in the upper arm, just hug the muscles to the bone, right? You're just doing that isometric hold, trying to pull them to the bone. Make sure your hand has contact on your chest. And then we're going to find that rotation. Again, please don't swing your arm out. That's a more dangerous rotation. I want you to stay connected. Bringing your hand to your chest creates a shorter lever. So as we move with momentum, we're just being careful with that shorter lever. So adding a little bit of rotation into our movement today. Let's go for two more, two. 
and one. <sighs> Toe heel your feet back together for a second. And then give me some juicy hip circles, just circling the hips in opposite directions. And you might be feeling it in your seat, but we're gonna just go back and work that area once again. So toe heel your feet wide, find a straddle that's comfortable for you. Now we have a couple of options here. We're gonna go back over to the right side. So set yourself up, bring your hips behind on the right side. Two options. One, you can just stay home and do these tiny little pulses, just the ever so tiniest little pulse. It'll really give you an opportunity to connect to your glute, or if you want a more dynamic, bam, right? There we are, we're working on our balance. Toe heel, you're landing. So you wanna toe heel and be quiet. That toe heel landing will also give you an opportunity to pull your hip back behind your heel. Notice, I'm not bringing my chest down to the floor and back up, right? I'm trying to keep my chest pretty up to the camera. Like if I was looking at all of you, I could see what design was on the t-shirt you were wearing. Let's go two. Can we balance on number one if you're doing that? If you're not doing that, just come to some sort of balance that works for you and bring your foot back down to the floor, tap your foot, now open up the knee for tree pose. So we have some options for our tree pose. You can stay home right here with a kickstand down or you can begin to travel your foot up the leg. If you travel the foot up the leg, press the foot into the leg and then press the bam, leg into the foot. So create, you're gonna feel that tension in the upper body and bring your arms up to the, out to the sides. Can you bring your arms up overhead? Back down in prayer. One more challenge, arms out to the sides, arms up overhead, arms down to prayer. Well done, my friends. With control, bring your knee back to the front and step out. Now, these balance challenges, use the wall, use a chair, kickstand. It's best for you to work on these balance challenges and with the um, accommodation that allows you to have the most success rather than doing this the whole time. So make those choices wisely. Let's come back to our wide stance again. This time we're gonna come over to the opposite side. Again, you can stay right here and just do these tiny pulses. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling that arch midfoot and making that glute foot connection relationship. Staying here is a lot of great work and it's tiring. If you want to come back to your balance, you can. Your balance leg stays long and land into your side lunge. Toe heel that landing so that you can decelerate your landing. So that takes ankle strength to unload. So rather than just pounding on the ground and sending that force and that shock up through your body, can you be mindful and decelerate? that shock and that force. <sighs> Connect your breath to your movement. Two and one. Ooh, standing tall, finding your balance or moving into a balancing posture. Kickstand can be down. Let's find tree pose on this side. Leg goes into the foot, foot goes into the leg. Hug your glute to the bone. Here's a cue I like in a standing pose. The standing leg, the flesh on the inside, Pull that flesh to the midline. Feel how that uh, straightens you up nice or nice and tall rather than just collapsing into your hip. So pull everything to the midline. Oops. And then find your arms out wide. Good. Reach the arms up overhead. Come down to prayer. Now, arms, remember, those are always optional. We do legs first here. Arms follow if that works for you. Arms go up overhead. And bringing your hands back down to prayer. Carefully and slowly bring the knee forward and step it out. So let's just step to touch. Just keep some movement, blood flow in your legs. Step to touch there. Before we move on to our next one. Ozzy, you're standing right in my notes. So you got to move. There you go. Thanks, buddy. 
Okay, we're gonna move into curtsy. We've moved to the sides and we've moved forward. Let's move backwards in our curtsy. So planting weight in your left foot, you're gonna step behind and find your curtsy. When we do this, the weight is in the front foot. That's where the work is happening. If I had to, I could pick up this back foot. So curtsy squat and step. Curtsy squat and step. Watch out, buddy. So <clears throat> you don't have to like reach really far back behind you like a skater, okay? It's really just about training your nervous system to respond to these shifts in weight, right? Something happens, you feel a little off balance, you catch yourself back here with this curtsy, right? So that's what we're just teaching ourselves to do is feel that catch, feel the rooting or the planting in your balance or your, yeah, your stable leg, your balanced leg. And then we're gonna pause right here with our leg back behind us. And if your glute still has some life in it, we're just gonna lower down and press up for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go ahead and kick the leg behind back to the center. Walk it out. You can step touch to walk it out. And we'll find curtsies on the other side of the body. Okay, so we'll think about it. Bam, plant our plant foot. Boom, we get knocked off balance. Oh, we've caught ourselves and recover. So little curtsies here. But just because we're practicing that the strength to recover and the muscle memory to recover doesn't mean that it can't be fun, right? So use your hands in any way, any creative way that you want. Hey, buddy. There's one place in the room that people can't see and that's the place, so move. Yeah, so you can take your hands and put them on your hips. You might feel more grounded and stable there. Some of you might feel more balanced with your arms out to the side. Enjoy yourself, add extra wrist circles. It doesn't really matter. Now, I didn't give you this challenge on the other side, but hey, balance, curtsy, balance. I think that's next week, I just got excited. Right? So not really a right way to do this. Lots of different ways. Stay with me here. Foot behind. We're going to do our static. Lower down and press up. So there's more weight that shifts to the back foot as you stabilize in these. But you're still feeling the burn. Right? So you don't want to shift the burn and try to put it in the back leg. Stay with that burn in the front hip too. And one, and come back to center. Let's march it out. Now, remember those wide steps that we did in the beginning of class? We're gonna revisit those wide steps again. So we're gonna just add on to the burn. I told you today was gonna be the day when we notch it up. Remember, pick something that works for you. Stepping right and together, that's important, okay? Staying home and squatting, that can work too. Or can you go wide squat? Can you go narrow squat? Wide squat, narrow squat. So a little bit of a mind trick. And then also, as the foot comes back to center, we're working with a narrow base of support on this squat. Good. So even though our left leg is sort of the dominant leg. When we step wide, we want to be able to commit weight to the right foot. And when we want to step, and when we step narrow, we want to keep the weight in the right foot. Stay with me in the center right here. Stand up tall, squeeze your glutes, send it back, stand it tall, squeeze, shoulders down, fist drive down. Last one, lower, stand tall. And then let's move to the other side. So maybe you just step Maybe you stay home and squat wide, or maybe you go wide squat and narrow squat with me. Wide and narrow. Good work, yogis. Stay with me. I call you yogis. Good job, functional ones, fun ones, funyuns. All right, that's officially the name of this group. You guys are now funyuns. I'll probably hear about this later in my contract because I mentioned some brand name but I'll just spell it differently. So 
Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. You can hear the heart rate, right? It's going up. Two, I might be moving too fast, right? I talk, I get excited, I move too fast. Stay center with me right here. Press up, lift the heels. Sit back, lower it down, press up, lift the heels. Now, do that at a pace that's a sustainable pace. So you might need just a little momentum to get those heels lifted. Three and two, we're gonna pause with the heels lifted. And one, pause with the heels lifted. Can you send the hips forward? Turn on the glutes with the heels lifted. And lower down, walk it out. How you guys doing? How's that heart rate, huh? Up a little bit? I know mine certainly is. All right. So we're going to do a couple moves just to cool things down. Take your feet and stand them wide again. Toes are forward this time, not in that turnout. With the feet wide, take the tips of the fingers, press them into your hips, send your hips back. With your heart pulling forward, not hiding from the earth, pull your heart to the earth. We're gonna come into that wide-legged parallel forward fold that we've done in our classes before. Bring your hands right under your body, sphere of tension. Now take your chin to your chest, eyes off the screen, eyes down to the floor. Shoulders are not lower than the hips. And stay with me here. Feel the back of the hamstring stretch. Take the hands, place them back on the thighs, press up. Now we can go into that hamstring and low back stretch again, or we can take it just a little bit lower by bringing your hands to the earth or to your chair. So hands come to sphere of tension. You can stay right there or you can bring your hands to the chair. Maybe bring it in front of you. If you have a block or if you can reach the earth, you can do that. So it's your choice here. Right fingertips go down to the earth, bend the left knee a little bit and pull the left hand up like you're uh, charting a lawnmower. Yep, just a little rotation. Hand can be in the chair while you do this. Just find a little bit of Rotation as the elbow comes back. Two. Last one. Come up to standing. Turn on the glutes. Inhale the arms up. Reach up. Look up. Exhale arms down to side. Star pose here. Flip the palms up. Broaden across the chest. Get nice and broad. But then just turn at the wrists to bring your palms down. Good. So feel the broadness in your chest. Keep it, hands go into hips, press the hips back, wide-legged forward fold on this side. And then again, left hand can go on the chair. I'm gonna move the chair since you saw that, or on the ground, and then pull up your lawnmower string. Good, pulling the elbow back, finding just the littlest bit of rotation in the rib cage as you pull the string back. You want to make sure your head's not below your heart here. So don't let your head hang heavy. Keep your back nice and long. Good. Last one. Hands go on thighs. Press back up and toe heel your feet together. We're going to do a new pose. I think we haven't done this one before. I can't remember. Uh, pyramid pose. So take your right foot and just step it back behind you. But your heel is going to go down. So you notice I have like a pyramid shape in my legs. From the front view, you're on railroad tracks. You're not on a tightrope, okay? So nice distance between the feet. And you wanna have a micro bend in the front knee. So pull the knee back and lock it out. Eh, not feeling good. Slight micro bend in the front knee. All right, now do this with me. Hands on the hips. If your left leg is forward, pull your left hip back in space and let your right hip wrap around and move more forward. So you might have to adjust the angle of your heel back here to get that, but keep drawing the back leg hip, the right hip forward in space, the front leg hip back in space, and then perform that same hip hinge that we just did with the wide leg. But now you're gonna feel it maybe in the hamstring of this front leg. Remember, revisit that micro bend. It's better to have more of a bend than less of a bend. Revisit that micro bend, good. Hand can rest right on the thigh here or right on the ankle. And you're going to reach and pull your lawnmower 
One more time. Spread the fingers, grab your rope, pull it. This time you're brushing your uh, forearm right along your rib cage. Draw your chin to your chest just a little bit to feel length in the back of your neck. Your eye gaze is down to the floor now. And two. And one. Pause. Put your weight in your front heel. Bend your front knee a lot to press yourself up to standing. Right leg meets left leg. We'll take this on the other side. So let's set it up. Left leg steps back. Heel goes down. Your foot is slightly turned Um to the front corner of the room. All right. So notice, lock out the knee. Oop, that feels yucky. Boom, get a little bicro bend in the knee. Now, this is the important part, the hips. Pull your right hip back in space. Let your left hip move forward in space. And then notice if you're super in, arched in the back doing that. So can you get your pelvis neutral, shoulders over hips, let the hips rotate, and then find that hip hinge like we practiced wide-legged. Good. Keep pulling right hip back as you hinge. Keep letting left hip drift forward, but still stay pressed into the full expression of your foot, into your heel of your foot. Revisit the micro bend in your front leg. Right arm can go down and rest or hold on to the shin. Left arm reaches and pulls. So you should be working your navel a little bit here, drawing navel into spine. But can you find stability here in the legs? That's what we're really looking for. So. If you draw your feet toward one another, you'll feel your hamstrings turn on. Does that help you feel more stable? Or if you remember the corkscrew instructions that I've given in previous classes, can you corkscrew your right foot a little bit? Three and two and one. Pause here, bend your front knee a lot more and then step your back foot to meet your front foot and we'll come to standing. Inhale your arms up overhead. Reach up, then exhale, swoosh them down and come into a little squat and then stand nice and tall. Inhale, exhale, inhale it up, exhale. As you swish your hands back, you might even send your weight to your heels and lift your toes up a little bit. Two, and one. Boom, and that wraps it up for today. I feel like I moved at a little bit faster pace. I hope that worked for you. Please stick around if you have any questions. It was a pleasure and an honor. I'll see you next week.